Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. Please be sure to like this video, give it a thumbs up, be sure to leave a comment, and also make sure you subscribe to the channel so every time that I upload new content, you're made aware. If you are already a subscriber, thanks for coming back and be sure to also like this video and give it a thumbs up and be sure to leave a comment. Now, that we have gotten that all out the way we have got to get into this situation okay because when i mean to tell you i was literally floored when i heard this now this usually i'm pretty much numb to this type of information and nothing really shocks me anymore but when i think about the uh, influence that these individuals have had on the black community it literally blew my mind to really hear this so as you all may know if you don't know that means you've probably been living under a rock okay we have Rashawn Khan doing an interview on August the 26th this interview actually hit the airwaves and it was uploaded by comedy hype all right now a lot of people are wondering who is Rashawn Khan okay and Rashawn Khan is actually Richard Pryor famous and very influential uh comedian black comedian Richard Pryor Okay, without Richard Pryor, we're just going to we're going to put it like this. Without Richard Pryor, you wouldn't have Wayne's Brothers. You wouldn't have Eddie Murphy. You wouldn't have your Martin Lawrence, your Will Smiths. A lot of black comedians will tell you that they cite Richard Pryor and even Paul Mooney as inspiration, you know, to do what they do. So let's just set the record straight with that. Okay, now Rashawn Khan is actually a former bodyguard for Richard Pryor. Okay, and he made a very shocking alleged revelation of the tumultuous dynamic between Paul Mooney and Richard Pryor after Richard Pryor became privy to the following information that you're about to hear. So I am going to play the clip of what Rashawn Khan actually said, okay? And I want you guys to listen very carefully because a lot of people who are doing commentary on this topic are missing a lot of key imperative points that will draw a chronological timeline okay so i want you to not listen to respond but listen to understand what rashawn is saying okay i will give more of my commentary and my thoughts on this but um listen very closely to the wording and the verbiage that rashawn is using and I'm going to pick it back up once you hear this. The relationship became fragile. Okay. Because Paul Mooney had Richard's son by that time. So Richard passed away in 2005. Where was his and Paul's relationship at that time? Well, <laughs> from... Jojo Dancer on, the relationship became fragile. Okay. Because Paul Mooney had Richard's son by that time. Okay. And he violated. And that's any man uh, if you violate their children like that. Mm -hmm. So Paul took advantage of, of the situation. Mm -hmm. And so from there on, whatever Paul Mooney was to Richard, and there was a time that Paul Mooney was Rich's friend. You know, I acknowledge that. Um, 
which is why the gay community really couldn't say anything mm -hmm. they attempted to about Richard because Paul Mooney was his friend mm -hmm. and they laughed. So when Paul did what he did, it was a violation of friendship first and then my son, you know, um, right. And in some circles that's supposed to be dealt with. So. Did, was there ever a conversation to retaliate against that? Yes, yes, man, of course. How, to what extent? To the extent of, of Richard didn't want him on the planet no more. He, he shared it with me and he said he wanted somebody uh, killed. Mm -hmm. Richard, that wasn't his conversation, so I just attribute that he must be high right now. And I, you know, it's Friday. This is the high day, so it's Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday. He's, you know, by Wednesday, he'll be straight because I knew the pattern. And, and I asked him again because Richard never spoke like that. And I just said, do you remember what you said to me last week? And he was, he was on it so clear, it was like, okay, it's serious. And so then I asked him, what is it about? He said, a million dollars, I want somebody to kill. And I was like, damn, I'm not a killer. I'm not that person, but I did give it thought. I know some people, some damn where, okay. you know. And the biggest problem with those people would have been you saying a million dollars to them because they would have did it for like 10 grand. Right. And so I asked him, what was it about? And this is your first time hearing about the incident? No, this is the first, when he told me the first time, I thought he was high. I just made that high conversation. But because he was so adamant about it, I asked him again that Wednesday. And then he went into detail. And that's when he told me what went on. And he told me who did it. Mm -hmm. And he was hurt by it. Yeah. He was hurt because it happened to his son. And he was really hurt, which I don't think Paul Mooney understood because someone that I took as a friend did that to me. Right. Um, wow. Okay. And this is, his son was like young at the time? Yeah, Richard Jr. Yeah, Richard was a little boy. Rewinding us, discussing that prior asked or requested, was looking for someone to pretty much put a hit on Paul right. for a million dollars. It didn't, and you you know, years later, it did not happen. Was there a, a reason why? It didn't happen because Richard caught on fire. Richard burned. And that's what saved Paul Mooney's life today, present day, is because Richard caught on fire. Mm -hmm. And then that became the primary. Before that, it was Paul Mooney. Mm -hmm. You did this to my son. Uh, it was betrayal. My son. And then you pretended like it didn't happen. So... Had Richard not caught on fire, Paul Mooney would not be here. He wouldn't be living. Did Richard ever, uh, I guess his son came to him, prior junior came to him about the incident? Or was it caught on like surveillance? Uh, uh, um, I don't think it was on surveillance. I don't think Paul was that stupid, but somewhere well, along the way, Richard found out. Um, yeah, and I remember letting Richard Jr. know Here's how your father thought about it. Richard cried then because he didn't think his father knew. And I said, your father, this is what he wanted done to Paul Mooney. And Richard looked at me and he said, really? I said, yeah, he told me everything. And I was able to repeat it to Junior. And he cried. He looked at me and he started crying. He said, I didn't know my father. I said, yeah, your father knew. And, um, and he was going to do what he thought was the right thing to do. And I did too. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to dissect a little bit of what was said here. However, before we do that, I'm just going to just make um, a point here. For some reason, I do not understand and I cannot fathom why. The black community has the pathology to hold on and sweep under the rug these types of situations when it comes to children being violated, whether it is by a family member, whether it is by a, a family friend uh, or a friend of the family, whether it's by a neighbor 
it just always seems as though an adult always becomes privy to what is being done to the child and no one seems to really stand up initially and then there comes a time where people want to clear their conscience or people want to uh, bring attention and awareness to something for their own monetary incentive and you know no tea no shade and no shade no tea but you know we do have Rashawn here initially most likely doing this interview because he does have a book coming out called everything ain't funny okay and i don't know if the synopsis of this book is a tell-all okay from his experiences and what he's seen but why now you know what i'm saying and it's just like i never understood why it is so difficult for the black community to hold individuals especially pedos accountable for their behavior and why we either one enable the behavior or two sweep the behavior under the rug and act like nothing happened because honestly in the end it comes out anyway okay what's done in the dark is always you know set to come to light now that that's said and out the way um let's dissect what was actually said here because as i said in the uh initiation of this video a lot of commentators are actually missing the point i've seen a few videos on the uh commentary when it comes to this topic um in particular and a lot of people were stating that oh well you know rj which is you know richard Pryor's son jr okay he was of age during the jojo dancer um time frame okay jojo dancer came out richard Pryor released that in 1986 now richard Pryor jr rj was born in 1961 okay now i want you to follow what i'm about to tell you okay richard Pryor jr RJ was born in 1961. Paul Mooney was born in 1941. A lot of people, we have a 20 year age difference there. Okay. Now, a lot of commentators are saying that this happened during the JoJo Dancer era. And around that time, RJ was of age okay rj would have been somewhere like 25 26 all right but here's how i'm going to tell you how this did not most likely happen around the jojo dancer era okay number one if you listen to rashawn rashawn is saying by the time jojo dancer was released the relationship between paul mooney and richard Pryor was already strained okay because by that time paul had done whatever he did with rj okay and richard was already in his feelings about it now i did my research and on several different uh platforms one of them including heavy.com had an article on facts about uh paul mooney okay now again age difference 1961 rj is born okay now 1975 is the furthest back the relationship between paul mooney and richard Pryor goes okay so according to heavy.com richard Pryor and paul mooney initially began working together in 1975 at that time rj was 14 years old okay follow me now 1975 from 1961 he's about 14 years old okay when prior initially starts working with mooney okay and what happened was was that mooney actually wrote the uh snl episode for prior in 1975 
they developed a relationship. By 1977, two years later, RJ is 16. Okay. At that point, Pryor had then hired Mooney to be a part of the Richard Pryor show. Okay. And brought him on to there to write episodes for him there and hide him for his own show. So there's a two year gap there where they're probably establishing a rapport. Okay. RJ is between the ages of 14 and 16 at that time. Okay. So again, listen to what Rashawn said. He stated that by 1985-86 because Jojo Dancer was out in 1986 the relationship was already soured at this point he was done and he wanted to basically put a hit out on him because he had been uh privy and, and been you know told or found out that Mooney had had some type of sexual encounter with his son okay so again Stick to that timeline, okay? Because I'm about to play a clip from TMZ that was released on August the 27th, okay? About the next day, I believe, after this interview actually hit the airwaves and hit YouTube. Um, and TMZ actually caught up with Richard Pryor Jr. or, or basically RJ in New York City the day after all of this kind of really blew up. Okay, and you're going to hear exactly what RJ told TMZ, but initially Richard Pryor befriended or got to know Paul Mooney as early as 1975. RJ was not of age then. Okay, so we have to keep that in mind. Tell you about the um, uh, claims from Rashawn Khan that you and Paul Mooney had a sexual relationship back in the 80s. Thank you. Is there any truth to that? I know that Paul Mooney's denied it. Well, whatever happened in my life, uh, it happened when I was young, uh, way way before the 80s. So. Okay. okay, so was it a consensual relationship? How could, it be, how could any relationship be consensual if I was a teenager? Right, that's what I'm saying. So it was, it was a long time ago. Uh, yeah. And Paul, Paul Mooney's denied the claim, so do you have anything you want to say to him? Well, I, no, I really have nothing to say at all about the situation. Were you aware of the of the alleged hate that your father put out on Paul Mooney uh, uh, that Rashawn Khan claims? No, I'm done. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your time, Mr. Pryor. So as you heard from RJ himself that these... Uh, incidents or basically these uh, alleged sexual assaults um, actually happened during his teenage years. He stated clearly, how can I consent to anything if I'm a teenager? So that means that this definitely had to happen in the 70s, which is not a coincidence because Richard and uh, Paul Mooney actually worked together and actually met in the 70s, 1975. Um, all in all, this situation is very sad. I don't know who, okay, Paul Mooney pissed off. I don't know where Rashawn came from, okay? Like I said, I don't know if this, you know, is being used to sell his book. Paul Mooney is denying these um, allegations up and down. Um, but you have three against one at this point because you also have Jennifer Pryor, I believe her name is, who's actually the widow to Richard Pryor, uh, corroborating the same story as RJ and Rashawn, stating that, you know, Paul has done this to RJ and one incident was actually caught on tape. Okay, so I don't know what's going on, but... It's just a hot, hot, hot ass mess, okay? And if you did not know, RJ actually released a book a while back called In a Prior Life, where he speaks of his trials and tribulations and growing up and how close he was to his father and how his life was so scary because it was such an alignment with the uh, life that his father lived. But... 
I really want to know you guys thoughts and comments on this information that you may have read or you may have seen or heard and drop it down in the comments let's you know discuss bounce you know um commentary off of each other and you know have the conversation but thank you guys so much for watching my video please like i said and in initially take the time to like it share it subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys in the next one bye